In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a pad frame to your project. And for this um, tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same current mirror differential amplifier that we used a few weeks ago. And what I have is a library that contains just the current mirror differential amplifier cell, like so. And I also have uh, the pad frame library that um, I published about a week or so ago. And that's what uh, that's what the the basic uh, empty chip pad frame cell looks like. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically want to copy these cells into the current mirror differential amplifier library so that they're all in the same library. And um, you, you'd have to copy all of these cells individually into that library if you uh, were using um, doing this through Glade. So what I'm going to do is something that's kind of a kludge but uh, seems to work. But I'm going to close these libraries and I'm going to go back out into the finder or into the into Windows and I'm going to manually copy the cells over. So I opened up the current mirror differential amplifier library and I'm going to open up the pad frame library and I'm going to take all of these subfolders that contain the layout views for my uh, pad cells and pad frame cells and I'm just going to select all those subcells, not the Glade library file, copy them and paste them into my current mirror differential amplifier library. So now when I go back over to Glade and I open up my current mirror differential amplifier library, I have all of those uh, pad frame cells in addition to my current mirror differential amplifier cell. So I'm going to open up the top level cell, which is chip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance by using create, create instance, hit the F3 key to select the instance cell name. And I want to create an instance of the current mirror differential amplifier, which is there. And I'm going to put it, oh, just down here near the edge of the pad frame. And I'm going to zoom in on that. So you can see that I could fit quite a few of these inside the pad frame here. And I can move this down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wire this up to the, uh, to the pad frame. So you'll notice here um, at the mouth of each pad there's the entrance to the pad and then on either side there's a place where you can get bias, chip VDD, and ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wire up my uh, negative supply rail to ground using rectangles on metal 2, like so. I'm going to do a similar thing for positive rail. Okay, I'm going to wire bias. Use bias to uh, connect to VB here, which is in metal one. And now I'm going to wire V plus and V minus up to these two pads, and I'm going to wire V out up to this pad. I'm going to do that in metal one. Let's 
see, 187.8, looks good. Same thing with the plus. Okay. So now if I zoom back out. <coughs> What we need to do is we need to change the pads down here to be appropriate for the type of inputs we had. So we had two inputs, and so we're going to make those in pads. And the way that you, you change one of these uh, blank pads into an in pad is you select the pad instance. So I have to be in full instead of partial selection mode to select the pad instance. I hit the Q key to bring up the query dialog and I'm going to just change blank pad here to in pad and that changes the instance from a blank pad to an in pad. Do the same thing for this one in pad and I'm going to make this um, an in or pad. So hit the Q key in or pad. And so now you can see instead of having a blank pad with a connection to the ground bias ring here, we have here a pad that has a connection through these series resistors to some diode clamps into um, the negative input, same here for the positive input, and then the output comes out basically through a metal line directly to the pad, um, and then there's some diode clamps to prevent any SD event from damaging the output there. Okay, so that's that's basically all there is to it. Um, just some things about the pad frame. Um, these four pads in the corners, this is pin five or pad five, that's bias. So it's an in pad, but you can get access to it all the way around the outside. Um, this is 15 up in the upper, uh, upper left hand corner and that's um, ground. Down in the lower left-hand corner, that's chip VDD, or core VDD, CVDD. And then uh, pin 35, which is in the lower right-hand corner, is uh, VDD for the pad frame. Um, and then the 36 pad cells that are on the, the four sides are configurable. They come pre-stuffed as, uh, as blank pads, but you can change um, any of them into any of the pads um, as I just showed with the, with uh, selecting the instance and then hitting the Q key. Okay, so let's just do a DRC check here. That's always a good thing to do. It takes a while to do the DRC, of course, just because it's uh, there's a lot of geometry to check, but it's not too bad. Seems to spend a lot of time checking select rules. A couple more things about this. So this is where pin one is right here and it goes around counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, up to 15, 
and then down to 20, and that would be the left-hand side of the chip, and then 21, 25, around to 40, which is the right-hand side of the chip in the package. Almost there. All right, no DRC errors were found. Okay, I'm going to save this library. And that's all there is to it.